Hi, my name is Richard Millington. I'm the founder of Feverbee. And today we're going to be talking about asset based community development. I think this is one of the most important ideas in community development. And what it essentially means that is that instead of looking at a community through its deficiencies, you look for the assets that exist within that community already, and then you build a community around those assets. And this means you identify where every unique member can contribute to the group. And the reason this is so powerful is that every single member who feels like they can make a unique, useful contribution will make that contribution if they really feel it makes a difference. And so what your goal is, is to bring people together, figure out what that unique contribution is, and then work with them to mobilize those assets and make that change happen. So I'm going to explain what that looks like by taking you through a workshop that we go through with our clients. And this primarily works with smaller communities. If you're launching a new, huge uh, customer support based community, this isn't for you. But for smaller groups, for MVP programs, for other kinds of communities, this might work incredibly well to really drive a high amount of engagement from day one. So let's go into the worksheet. What we're trying to do first is just generate the list of assets that people have. So if we zoom in a little, what you can see here is that we're asking people to share any asset, skill, resource, connection, or anything that might be useful to the group. So if we use sales professionals as the example here, yes, there's lots of things they can share, but we do want them to be precise. Closing deals, yes, if you know how to close deals, that's an asset. If you've got scripts to close deals in high level B2B negotiation zone, this is a lot, lot better. And you'll see the list that we have here are very much a good mixture of things. And this is what you'll get when you do this kind of workshop. Expertise in closing deals, crafting persuasive emails, uh, juggling high value client accounts. Um, what else did we come up with? Uh, sales forecasting, modeling and tools. Not everyone will give you a precise answer the way you want. But by bringing people together in a workshop like this, you do get a good list of assets quite quickly. And you can prompt people with suggestions of what kind of assets they might want to be thinking about as well. So competitive analysis frameworks and templates, whatever anyone has that might be useful to someone else, this is what you want them to list here. And this process doesn't take too long. Five minutes is usually as much time as you need. If you're working with certain kinds of groups, then you might want to spend more time. But five minutes is good and you just want as many of these assets as possible. The next thing we need to know is what are the needs of the community? Even if you don't take the asset-based approach, we want to look at the needs of the community. And here we go through a second exercise. This is where we want people to submit between one to three needs. And obviously, if you've got a much bigger group, then maybe you just want one. But if you've got a smaller group, maybe you want three. And generally here, you want anything up to 20, maybe 25 different needs, but you want them to describe it in a specific way, which is I want something to achieve an outcome because this will help you categorize these needs later on. So again, community of sales professionals, we see I want to improve product knowledge in order to communicate value effectively. Uh, I want to enhance my prospecting skills to generate more leads. Again, these are pretty good. Uh, I want to learn effective negotiation strategies to secure better deals. Uh, I want to refine my follow-up processes to prevent leads from going cold. Again, this is a really good list of needs. It's quite specific in both what they want, or at least what they think they want, and then the outcome as well. And again, you can prompt people around here, but you want to be spending maybe five to 10 minutes on it, and you get a pretty good list of needs if you do it well. Now comes the hard part. The hard part is where you try to categorize these particular leads. You can do this as part of a group or you can stop the workshop here and do it yourself. I like to do it as part of a group, but it doesn't always work well and it can get quite messy. But you can go through each one of these relatively quick and see if there's a broader category at work here. If that doesn't work, then again, stop the session, go through it yourself, come back to it a second time. Doing this in a two part session is perfectly fine as well. So what we see here, sales skills developments, we've got a couple listed here that are drawn from these. Lead generation and prospecting, communication, client relationship building. So we've got around, what's this, one, two, three, four, five, eight different um, broader needs, and then some subsections below that. 
Now comes the really interesting part. Now we want to prioritize these needs. And we use a simple method here. I'm sure you've seen it before. Everyone has three tokens and depending upon how important that need to, is to them, that is where they can assign most of their tokens to. So people can assign all three tokens to one need or they can distribute them evenly if they like. And this is what we landed on. Uh, sales development seems to have the most by a long way. That seems to be followed by lead generation and then probably sales strategy and planning as well. But it's pretty clear when we zoom out here that one of these is clearly above the rest. So the next step, we prioritize these. This shouldn't take much time at all. You just look at where these are and put together a rough idea of how they relate to one another. If we're building this community of sales professionals is we've got three really strong leads and now we know the kind of discussions we might want to create, the kinds of content we might want to create, the kind of events or the topics for those events that we might want to use. This kind of information is really, really useful. So this shouldn't take you long at all. The next step, remember those assets that we had right at the beginning? Now, where possible, we want to assign these assets to the top three things that people want to know. So now you want to ask members to take those assets, the ones that they contributed at the very beginning of the session, and drop them, if they can, next to the skills here. So now they're being very specific in the kinds of assets that they can offer to that community. So we're matching the assets with what the needs of the community are. And now we get a pretty good list. And so the next step after this, and we don't need to cover it here, is where you go through and ask people precisely what they can do. And this is where you get members realizing that they can make a unique, useful contribution. Maybe it's sharing a template or a resource. Maybe it's leading a certain part of the community. Maybe it's hosting an event and activity for that session. Maybe, for example, it's sample sales and contract agreements. Someone can host a webinar or a short video on those kind of things. Or bring in outside experts to talk about these kind of things. But now we have a community which everyone's really excited about and they're getting involved in. And they feel like they can contribute to. It's not you that's decided what's going to happen. You've let the community bubble up and naturally highlight what each member can offer and what your members really, really need. Hopefully this all makes sense. You put together the needs, you create the list of assets, you generate the needs, you find the list, you prioritize your needs, and then you discuss and rank them. And then finally, you figure out how each asset can support those needs. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so, so much for watching.